In today's video, I want to explore the relationship between digital artists and social media. The core question I want to tackle is does social media actually help or hurt your journey as an artist? I want to go over my personal journey with social media, some challenges that I've seen, and a few positive impacts about social media that has on the art community. And I know most of the conversation about social media is largely negative and we'll definitely talk about that, but there are some good things to highlight. So grab your stylus, draw along with me, and let's talk about it. When I was starting out, my main platform of choice was DeviantArt. Back then, it was a really tight-knit community focused on creative expression without much of the negativity you might expect from an online space. This was a time roughly when Facebook was starting. I believe DeviantArt start, may have started just a little bit uh, before Facebook, but it was a really cool space where you can share your artwork and get a lot of great feedback. The downside though, that it was a very difficult place to grow a broad audience. And you were essentially showcasing your work to other artists without a way to reach art enthusiasts beyond that niche. Then Instagram came along and it kind of changed the game. It wasn't just about artists anymore. Suddenly there was a whole community of people who appreciated visual art. It was a huge demand for art. I think the arrival of Instagram made platforms like DeviantArt less relevant because you can reach both the artists and art enthusiast communities in one place. DeviantArt is still a great place to post if you're a developing artist uh, very early on in your development journey because other artists are you know, very happy to jump in there and give you great constructive feedback. However, the same way Instagram kind of disrupted the DeviantArt art scene. Along came TikTok and introduced short form videos and a new way to connect with audiences. TikTok forwards also pushed Instagram to pivot, focusing heavily on video reels. Unfortunately, this shift made it harder for artists to thrive with just static images. So if you are an artist or photographer, you might find in the last couple of years, it's been much harder to grow and maintain your audience on Instagram. Recently though, it seems like Instagram has been trying to rebalance its algorithm to be a little bit more inclusive of images again. But honestly, only time will tell how that plays out. So off the top, I mentioned that there are some benefits of social media, especially as an artist. And there's a few. First, there's the potential for massive exposure and reach. And we just talk about that a little bit from the difference of DeviantArt to Instagram. Social media allows artists from anywhere in the world to share their work and gain an audience that they might never have reached otherwise. Think about it. You as an artist in maybe South America, you're not surrounded by the publishing industry. You're not surrounded by the art community. You can be at home in your apartment and you can just be posting online and you can reach an international audience, people who enjoy your artwork. That is such a powerful thing. And we sometimes forget about how amazing that is. And it's something that didn't exist not too long ago, but now Every one of us as artists, as creators, have the option to reach a global audience without the need of any other third-party gatekeepers to tell us what's good art and what art the audience will actually like. Second, the second big benefit of social media is the direct feedback and the community buildings that they offer. These are huge positives. Being able to connect with other artists and art lovers can be incredibly encouraging and it's a great way to receive immediate feedback on your work whether if it's encouraging you to keep producing something that you know is really connecting with an audience or other artists saying like hey that's great have you ever considered this technique or wow i've never really thought about doing this that way how about we try to collaborate on something it happens in a myriad of different ways and it's such an incredible thing I talked about how the community on DeviantArt was really strong. The same thing is true on platforms like Instagram and TikTok. I see a lot of positive feedback, especially when you put yourself out there, really post your artwork in a way that really engages 
and encourages feedback from other uh, other other artists or other art lovers. The third benefit is that social media kind of essentially serves as a digital portfolio. They can make it easy for potential clients and collaborators to discover your work and see your progression over time. This can happen a couple of ways. So if you're posting on Instagram and you want to maybe share your work with an editor that's looking for a book cover artist, you can show them the link to your Instagram rather than like printing things out or sending them an email with a bunch of attachments. You send a link to your Instagram account and they can see your artwork and your progression timeline. The flip side of that is that editors or, you know, potential hiring, gig hiring managers can discover you just through the social platform. So opportunities you didn't even know of exists might show up in your DMs. Then of course is the opportunity for monetization. So outside of being hired or applying for other gigs, Features like Instagram's integrated e-commerce tools or the ability to take commissions through direct messages have opened up brand, like complete revenue streams for many artists. There are artists out there who make a living just by selling commissions through their Instagram account. For example, I, back in my DeviantArt days when I was really developing as an artist, I would get messages all the time of people interested in doing commissions of their original characters in my art style, which was a very flattering and b allowed me the opportunity to uh, be able to eat because i was in college and didn't really have a bunch of cash lying around to afford ramen for the next week so that was pretty awesome but with every benefit there's a downside time we talk about some of the challenges artists face on social media one of the biggest issues is the pressure to create for algorithms. And I think this is an issue all of us have experienced. Platforms reward certain types of contents, which can tempt artists to focus more on what's trending rather than what they generally want to create. Now, this is true in both the type of content you're creating in terms of maybe characters that you're drawing. Um, maybe you are drawing a lot of shipping of two characters and that's really going viral is taking off but that was fun to draw for maybe two or three drawings and you really want to draw other things but your audience or the algorithm thinks that your audience only wants one type of drawing from you and that sort of pigeonholes you into doing that type of artwork over and over again and that can be terribly frustrating the other thing is true is when we talked about a little bit is the shift from creating images to videos. And if that's a skill set that you're not comfortable with, the skill set that you don't even want to learn, being able to thrive and grow in social media has sort of forced a lot of people to take that on as additional skill set, which may not be necessarily a bad thing, but it does force you to maybe go away or or not stick to what you generally or truly do care about creating. The other challenge, and I think this one might be as much as or a bigger problem than the algorithm, which is the comparison trap, which leading to burnout. This is when you're constantly scrolling through these of other artists, and you feel like you're not keeping up or your work isn't good enough. This feeling is incredibly draining. And this happens to all of us. I bet you've probably felt this way at some point during this week. I know for myself, I definitely feel very discouraged when I'm going through Instagram, um, especially on my follow feed and a lot of people I consider my peers and other professional artists, and I'm seeing how well they're doing in their careers or um, the amazing masterpieces that they're posting. And I just have to remind myself that their artistic journey is different from my artistic journey. And that can be a very difficult thing to remind yourself, but it is true. You are developing as an artist and you may get to where they are professionally or in terms of the quality of your artwork. And it's just a matter of how long it'll take you to get there. And you, the thing that will stop you from getting there is if you get discouraged by seeing other people's progress. That is a 100% way to guarantee you'll never reach to where they are. Instead, it's important to look at mm, those pieces and those artists and as they were posting their pieces and really see it as an opportunity to study and to grow 
and try to take your ego out of it and really try to analyze your artwork, try to figure out what it is you like about them, try to figure out what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses as artists, because believe me, they're there. And then also another thing that a lot of people don't consider is what those artists are leaving out. A lot of artists are leaving out their, are only posting their best work. They're leaving out the artwork that they don't like, or they're cropping out elements of, of, of things that they don't like to draw. Um, they're avoiding certain topics. They're avoiding certain angles. They're avoiding um, certain anatomy. They're avoiding, you know, maybe drawing animals. They are terrible at drawing animals, so that you'll never see them draw an animal. Uh, maybe they focus more so on environments than doing people because they're, they're not feeling confident about people. It's super important to realize that every artist has their own journey, just like you do. No one's super great at everything. I mean, there are some artists that are, I'm not gonna lie, but even them, they have their own struggles. So you have to make sure that you don't fall into a comparison trap and get that sense of demotivation, get that sense of burnout. When you see artwork that you like online, don't get discouraged by it. Use it as an opportunity to study and get better. There's also the issue of quality versus quantity. Sometimes artists focus so much on posting frequently to stay relevant that they compromise the quality of their work. It's super important to remember that the algorithm should be working for you and not, and you shouldn't be working for the algorithm. And the only way to do that is that you set your terms with your relationship with social media. So if you're issue or the thing that you're trying to develop over the next two months is that you want to get better at maybe hitting deadlines and being really good at organizing your time and being able to create illustrations in a more timely manner then a schedule is great then being forcing yourself to post like every thursday at a certain time is a great tool and it's a great asset and it's a great motivator for you to do that and you're not really so much concerned about maybe the quality of the work because what the goal is more so about your ability to hit that deadline on the flip side, if your goal is to post artwork that you're really super proud of and you want to spend a lot of time working on it and work out the details, great, go ahead and do that. Don't let social media or don't let the algorithm sort of set the terms on your creative experience. You set your terms and you post on social media the way you want to. And let's not forget about copyright concerns. This is another huge issue with social media. The highly shareable nature of social media makes it easier for art to be reposted without credit. This can be especially frustrating for digital artists who rely on their work for a living. The other part of this issue is the issue of training data. A lot of the platforms right now are either developing their own generative AI systems or their uh, parent company has their own generative AI systems and they're using posts, comments, and artwork as training data to improve their own generative AI. And this is a huge copyright concern just as much as people stealing your artwork online and, and printing them in like print on demand platforms. This is just as much of a problem as that because <clears throat> it provide it creates this environment where people are able to generate artwork in your style or maybe uh, modify your artwork in a way that you do not intend to happen. So we're living in a brand new world. I really don't have much advice on this. Uh, there's only two avenues right now that I see, uh, which is uh, if it's something that really concerns you and you really don't want to participate in this, then removing yourself from social media is definitely an option. The problem with that is that if you live in an environment where there isn't alternative options for you to grow an audience, let's say, you know, you live in New York City, there's lots of art galleries there, there's lots of publishers there. You're very much in a situation or environment where you don't need social media as badly as maybe someone who lives in a small town, doesn't have access to those type of gatekeeping industries. And you, the only way for you to grow your own audience is online through platforms where there's a huge audience ready and, and eager to consume your content. So for those people, it's very difficult for them not to participate with social media, even with all these issues of copyright and generative AI training. Unfortunately, there's no right or wrong answer here in terms of what we can do as artists. Uh, however, I do hope some of these companies understand some of these issues 
and sort of build better tools uh, for us to be able to coexist with each other. Now, I want to talk about can the comparison between Instagram and TikTok. Instagram has always been about visuals. The grid format focuses on polished, finished pieces, which can be great for showcasing complete works. On the other hand, TikTok short form videos open up new possibilities for sharing process videos and telling stories through art. In terms of engagement, likes and comments are the bread and butter of Instagram. TikTok, however, thrives on virality and rapid feedback. A single TikTok video can get a massive audience in just a few hours if it resonates with the algorithm. Another key difference is audience interact. On Instagram, the interactions are more one way. People like or comment on your posts, but on TikTok, you can reply to comments with videos or collaborate using features like duets. It's more dynamic and interactive experience. And to be honest, it's something that I'm still learning and understanding how to use because I'm so used to the traditional, you know, post your image, get your likes, get your feedback, and be able to uh, reply to people in comments. TikTok is very different in terms of um, how it reaches an audience and how you engage with that audience. So, how do you find a balance between using social media effectively and staying true to your artistic goal? First, it's important to find a balance. Create art that you're passionate about and try not to get too wrapped up in that what the algorithm is going to reward. Focus on your creative journey and keep experimenting. When it comes to posting, have a strategy. You may want to share finished pieces on Instagram and then use TikTok for process videos or art challenges. Figure out what fits your workflow and resonates with your audience. And lastly, setting boundaries is key. It's easy to spend hours scrolling through feeds or overanalyzing metrics, and that can lead to burnout. Take breaks and remember that social media is just a tool. It's not the entire journey. If there's one thing I hope you can take away from this is that your journey as an artist is unique. Social media can be a great tool, but it's not the destination. It's okay to experiment, I what works for you, and honestly, just grow at your own pace. If you guys enjoyed this video, or if you have your own thoughts about social media, maybe some experiences you'd like to share, drop them in the comments below. And if you liked what you've heard and you kind of like the drawing you see here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, keep drawing.